Hey, hey, this is Julian and you are on Eat the Blocks. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can send Ether to a smart contract with Web3. When you send Ether to a smart contract, you are modifying the blockchain. So that means that the Ether transfer has to be part of a transaction. There are two ways we can create this transaction to send Ether to our smart contract. The first way is by executing a function of our smart contract. So when we call this function in the transaction parameters, we will also specify that we want to transfer Ether. And the second option is to send Ether directly to the smart contract. Well, actually, a function will still be executed, and that's what we call the fallback function, and I'll explain this after. All right, so let's start with the first way of sending Ether by executing a function of our smart contract. So here is my example project. So I've used Truffle to initialize this project. If you don't know what is Truffle, that is a framework for smart contract. Check out my intro video on that if you don't know how it works. So here, this is a standard Truffle project and I have a very simple example smart contract. So in my smart contract, I have two functions. First function, send ether. So this is a payable function. So that means that you can receive some ether. And when it's called, then I change the value of this string to send ether so that we can know that it has been called. And for the other function, that's what we call the fallback function. I will explain this after, but first we're going to send ether to our smart contract by calling the send ether function. By the way, the fact that I called this function send ether has no relationship with the fact that you can actually send ether to it. You could call it foo or ba or whatever you want. It doesn't matter. The only thing that matter is that I have the payable keyword here. It's what make it able to receive some ether. All right, so I'm going to open my script file where I have already instantiated Web3 and also my contract object. If you don't understand this, watch the previous videos of this series on Web3. And I also get the list of all the Ethereum addresses of my wallet because I need an address to sign my transaction. So let's send some Ether to our smart contract. So for that, we're going to execute the send ether function of our smart contract. So we're going to await a promise. So we use the contract object. Then under the method ski, we'll get access to the send ether function. So if this function accepted any argument, then we we'll provide this argument like this. In this case, there is no argument, so we don't specify any. Then we use the send method because in order to transfer ether, we need to create a transaction. So that means that if instead of calling this function send ether with, uh, with send, if instead you use call and you try to send ether that way, it will not work because call only read data from the blockchain. It doesn't modify the blockchain. So make sure to use the send method here. And then we need to specify the parameters of our transaction. So the sending address, so we want the first address in our wallet. And then the second parameter is the value of ether that we want to send. So for example, here we can put 100 and that's it. So here there is a caveat with this value argument because here we don't actually specify the ether transfer in ether, but we specify it in a smaller unit called way. So way is like a very, very small fraction of ether. This is equal to 10 power minus 18 ether. So that's a very, very, very small number. If you don't know uh, what is way and you don't know in general ether unit, you can check out my other video on the topic, but Basically, the problem is that with this way of doing uh, of specifying ether, if we want to send just one ether, that means that we will need to specify a huge number. And this number would be so big that actually JavaScript can't even handle it. It's beyond the maximum number that can be represented by JavaScript. So to solve this problem, actually, there are other ways we can specify the value here. So one way is with the JavaScript number, and it will work for small ether transfer. But 
for a bigger ether transfer you can also specify a string so here you can make your number as big as you want this is a string it will not hit the limit of javascript for number and uh, we still have two other ways by using some javascript library so one javascript library is called bn.js uh, and it allow you to, uh, to represent really big number and actually you can access this library from web3 so it's web3.utils and here you can use 2bn and it's going to create a bn instance and here you specify your string number like this or you can also use another library that is called uh, bignumber.js so for me the most simple is to use a string but if you need to do some um, operation on these big numbers like addition subtraction etc in this case you might want to use the bn library okay so let's keep it simple here and we're going to specify this as a string all right so next i want to prove you that we have actually called this send ether function so let's quickly go back to our smart contract and so here i've created this variable function called and since i made it public that means that solidity automatically creates a getter function of the same name so i can read the value of this function and after i call the send ether function this should be equal to send ether so let's do this console log and we're going to await contract.method.function called. And we're going to call this all right. So now let's start a local blockchain with truffle develop in another terminal. And I'm going to deploy the smart contract. Okay, so now in my terminal, I'm going to run my script. And I see send ether, so our send ether function was called, no problem. Okay, so that was the first way of sending ether to a smart contract. The other way is by sending ether directly to the smart contract without calling any specific function. However, even if you don't call any specific function, a function will still be called. <laughs> so I know this is a little bit confusing. So let me explain. So let's go to our smart contract. So we have two functions, send ether that we just called before and this other one, which is called a fallback function. So a fallback function is called if you send a transaction to a smart contract without specifying any function or if you specify a function that does not exist. So the way to define a fallback function is by using the function keyword, but without any name. And then you can also specify some uh, function modifiers as exactly like you can do with normal function like external. And you also need to specify payable if you want to send ether to it. So we're going to send a transaction to the smart contract. We won't specify any function. We'll also include some ether and this function is going to be called and all the code inside will be executed. So our function called variable is going to be updated. This way of sending ether directly to a smart contract only work if you explicitly define this fallback function. If you don't define it and you try to send ether directly, it will fail. By the way, I have a video just on fallback function in Solidity, so check it out if you're not clear on how it works. Okay, so let's go back to our script, and so we're going to send ether directly to our smart contract. So this time we will not use the contract object, but we will use web3. So web 3 transaction, And here we're gonna specify the parameter of our transaction. So the sender of the transaction is as usual, our first address here. This time we need to specify the recipient address. So we want the address of our smart contract. So we can have this very easily in the option key and that's option dot address. And then we can specify the value that we send to the smart contract. So the same rule apply as in this, what I show you before. So it can be a number, a string or a big number. So let's just specify a string. All right. And after that, 
let's call the function call method uh, just to verify that the the value of this variable has changed just to prove you that the fallback function was executed all right so it should be fine so let's execute the script again yeah so first we execute the send ether function you can see it here and after the fallback function so everything is working fine and the last thing i'd like to show you about ether transfer is how you can send ether not to a smart contract but to a regular address so in this case you will still use the send transaction method so await web3 dot eth dot send transaction and so you specify the sender address and then for the recipient address well you put whatever address you want to send it to so for example uh, maybe you can send it to another address of our wallet and uh, you specify the value and uh, and that's it so actually sending either to a smart contract or to a regular address using this send transaction method this, this is exactly the same by the way make sure to grab a copy of my web3 cheat sheet where i put all the most useful information about the web3 that you need to know as a blockchain developer it's free just follow the link in the description all right that's it for this video on how to send ether to a smart contract with web3 in the next video i will show you how you can listen to events with web3 so make sure to watch this video as well if you have any questions ask them in the comments down below thanks for watching bye